chocolate chip cookies is that, you know, everybody's eaten one, everybody has an opinion. There are the people who want them super crispy, wafer like, soft and chewy, raw cookie dough in the center, standing up off of the baking sheet. And the things that came out most of all were crispy, chewy, having like a crisp edge, but that fades into a little bit of like a gooey, chewy center. So that's what we tried to achieve here. And chocolate chip cookies in particular, they're like snowflakes. At the end of the day, like they're all a little bit different. For recipes where they are a very well-known thing, usually what we try to do is have a really long development process. Um, the reason being that what I like to do is from the beginning, I'll cook recipes that are very well reviewed just to see what's out there and what we liked uh, about each one. Did you try the Rick Martinez ones? Oh yeah, well I'm very familiar with the Rick Martinez chocolate sort of toffee chip cookies. I love that recipe. Honestly, like this takes probably most closely after that cookie as its inspiration. We worked, you know, over a period of like several weeks, you know, I had people trying these. I went through multiple, multiple, multiple rounds of development, even with my own cookies, once I understood the direction I wanted to go in. But I knew from a flavor perspective that I wanted at least some brown butter in this cookie. So that is the starting point. We're gonna take this to the stove and we're gonna take it from there. So here's the thing about brown butter in cookies. When you use like a liquid fat, there's no need to cream out the butter and the sugar, which is amazing because in this instance, you don't even need to use a stand mixer or a hand mixer for that matter for this recipe. You know, we're asking very little of you in terms of equipment. What we are asking is that you brown your butter. So just let it kind of all melt together over low heat. So I'm starting to get a little browning. That's great. I just wanna make sure everything stays moving and that nothing sticks to the pan. So that's the kind of color I'm talking about. I'm gonna transfer that kind of quickly so I can stop the cooking. I added the rest of the butter right away. It might kind of start to foam and spit a little bit and that means that you're driving off the water content of the butter, which is what we don't wanna do. So I'm just gonna do a little tester with one piece of the butter just to see if it's cooled enough. Yeah, a lot of people were very insistent in wanting grams for this, and you know what? They are absolutely right. We heard you, and we republished the recipe with grams, you know, just to take into account your needs and wishes. Honestly, there's no reason why we should be not publishing grams in our, our baking recipes. So this is dark brown sugar, which has the highest molasses content. Molasses actually has a good amount of acidity to it, and that acidity is what is gonna react with our baking soda, which is you know our only leavener in this cookie, aside from our egg. Um, so brown sugar is going in, along with quarter cup white sugar. Um, as you can see, this is gonna stay super grainy because the fat does not wanna dissolve it. However, the sugar is more or less smooth from the standpoint of there are no huge lumps here. I'm going to mix my dry ingredients just so that they're ready to go. So this is one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I'm putting in three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda, and then one and a quarter teaspoons of kosher salt. I'm just gonna incorporate these. Does the little bowl make a difference? You need to do this in the smallest bowl possible. <laughs> I'm only using one whole egg for this recipe. And part of the reason for that is egg whites act akin to water in terms of how they interact with the, um, the proteins in the flour. So I didn't want to introduce too much liquid from the standpoint of having a dough that was too loose to work with. What I found was that what had the biggest impact on the flavor of the cookie, but also helped control spread and gave like kind of a like cool kind of glossy sheen was the yolk. So I've got one whole egg and then I've got two yolks from large eggs here. So one whole egg plus two yolks going in here. And this is the point at which those sugars are gonna start to dissolve. It's gonna take on this like nice kind of almost matte sheen. So you don't have to go crazy whisking, but um, that's the vanilla going in. But you definitely want to see that change where it goes smooth on you. 
So here we have Guitard, 70% bar chocolate. So it's like really, you know, kind of assertively bittersweet. You get that fruitiness and that kind of like that brightness from the acidity of the chocolate. I chop these into like pretty rough pieces. And what's nice about the bar is like you can do it like relatively quickly. And what's cool about breaking down the bar yourself is that you get these lovely irregular pieces. You know, you get some like big fat chocolate moments and then you get these like little kind of chocolate shards. There was an aesthetic to that that I really, really liked. I felt so much better about putting a, a chocolate chip cookie out into the world that like felt like it had a little bit more of a modern look to it with those kind of graphic irregular chocolate pieces. So now dry ingredients are going in, I'm folding these together. There's not really much of a danger of overworking this, um, certainly not by doing it by hand. You know, you definitely want to work all of that flour into this mixture just in the last like 30 seconds. It went from being like fairly loose to like loose, but stiffening by the second. So for anyone who felt like their first pass might have spread too much, I would say like this is the point where you know, once the chocolate goes in, you could rest this dough, just kind of room temperature, even for five or 10 minutes, that should make like a pretty big difference in terms of the, the getting the flour to hydrate and, um, and stiffen this dough up. So chocolate is going in. There is gonna be a lot of spread with these. This is about the consistency that it should be. You know, it should be able to stand up on the the baking sheet, hold that detail. The cookie scoop just allows me to know exactly how much I'm putting into each one and therefore how much space I need on the cooking sheet. So I find like eight cookies on a sheet is about all you can do, you know? So you, you do need two cookie sheets for this. One person was like quite irate that this recipe was only yielding 16 cookies. At the end of the day, wouldn't you rather have like 16 like dangerously close to perfection cookies than like 24 smaller, you know, compromised cookies? I don't know. Baking these at 375, um, which is, you know, kind of on the higher end for a cookie. Um, part of it is that we want the heat of the oven to really set that edge, give it a little bit of color and a little bit of crispness. But once the heat kind of sets the edge, we want it to kind of spread out to about yay big or so. Um, once that edge is set and baked, it's gonna kind of arrest the lateral spread of the cookie and make it want to spread up a little bit. So anyway, here goes nothing. I like to stagger them a little bit on the baking sheets just to keep the air circulating around. So eight minutes. Um, do you want to? Should we? Should we look at some reviews? Oh yeah. While we wait. Let's read. Let's Can read some up? scathing reviews. Let me. Let me grab my computer. All right. M Figs of Montreal. Um, honestly, the best basic cookie recipe I've ever used. These were definitely a few notches up from regular chocolate chip cookies. The brown butter added great flavor. Made mine pretty large and still had 24 cookies. That seems wrong. Now let's get to some of the bad stuff. Not sure what I'm doing wrong. These cookies turned out really runny for me. Anyone have suggestions? Made these cookies using the new weight measurements provided. They sped quite a bit, so I ended up with a thinner cookie than I'd usually prefer, but the real issue I'm having with these is how greasy, oily they feel when you're eating them. I mean, that's like, that's something that's like kind of interesting to me, you know, the comments about like greasiness, because like when is grease butter and when is greasiness butteriness? Not to skip ahead here, but just for the sake of argument, there is in the texture like a lot more kind of like richness forward quality. But in terms of like, you know, like greasiness, like I certainly have like more chocolate than, than butter on my fingers right now. So I don't know what to chalk it up to if it's like, you know, a different brand of flour that's hydrating in a different way, different amount of protein, you know, that's not, you know, so it's not like kind of like activating the similar amount of gluten to like what we're developing with here. Like this is far from over. If like if there's anything that Guns N' Roses has taught us is that like it's never over, you know, never say never. Axel can reach out to Slash, they can get back on the same page, you know, they can make, you know, their next album happen and you know, look, like, there's a lot of people who reached out to me via, you know, DM, like, on Instagram, and I feel like I responded or reacted to the vast majority of them. 
Um, I tried to diagnose issues where I could. I also, frankly, saw like a lot of great looking cookies. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, like there is going to be a tremendous amount of variability just between ovens, users, ingredients, and all the rest of it. Into it. As you can see, like even between the two baking sheets, these have a little bit more kind of cracking across the top. These have a little bit more of a ripple to them. Same, same dough, same oven, same time, but snowflakes. I feel like this is my Everest. I feel like this is something that you could work on and refine your entire life. I will never be done with it. Um, I am it and it is me. And um, yeah, it's, it's very intense putting this out into the world, you know? Um, so anyway, fly. They're so beautiful. I know you see the flaws, but you just have, <laughs> you just have to see the beauty. No, I, I see that too, you know? Yeah, a lot went into it. And yeah. I know, people don't see that. They just see a picture and they don't know. Can I tell you a little known um, fact about myself? Yeah. This is a true story. My first word was cookie. No way. First word, because every time I said it, my parents would reward me for speaking. Oh, yeah. And they would and give just... me another cookie. And oh, I yeah. Was like, this is no dumb. Great. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying cookie. Future food editors unite. That's right. Look, come on. I mean, that's like. Give me a break that's hot. Right now. That's hot. They're perfectly warm. Yeah. No, oh, that's nice. I don't know if this is something people have noted. There's a savoriness to the cookie. The richness of the chocolate, the bitterness, the like, the texture, the whole thing. It is a real delight. I'm gonna back away. All right, okay. cool. All right, see ya. <laughs> oh wow, they're beautiful. Are these BA's best? <laughs> Their BA's tried real hard. <laughs> I'm not warm. So nice. So even the mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the kind of crisp. The crisp, the shoe yeah. The it's trying to get those two things happen at the same time. That's 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 tricky. It gets almost like that, like crumbly crispness. Mm -hmm. Like the edge will do that, and yet the center bends. I love that. That's the world I'm living in. Take the journey with me. Um, you know. Make cookies, be happy. That's all I have to say. I'm done. Engineering our own. It's cool, we're good. <laughs> uh, it's cool, my mom said I need to, I need to uh, smile more in my videos anyway, so Andy's, uh, Andy's on target with that.